Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Getting back into videos. <laughs> Finally starting to feel like a normal human being again. Anyway, my order for the new saltwater taffy distress products arrived. Love. <laughs> I haven't done swatches or anything like I've done um, with previous ones, you know, comparing them to other colors. Planning to do that because people ask, but there's plenty already like available on the interwebs, but I wanted to play because yeah, the color, I just, I love it. I love the color. So anywho, I've got my Spellbinders Platinum machine here. If you have a different die cut machine, you can check the product listing for the embossing folders that I'm using or one folder. There's different sandwich options. Sometimes you just got to experiment. For me, I have my machine. I have the Pl Spellbinders platform and two metal shims and then Simon's embossing folder with the cardstock in it. That's what works perfectly for me. I do like to mist my cardstock. I'm using uh, Distress watercolor paper here and I just lay out my flower sack cloth. Give it a light just to prevent water getting everywhere. I give it a light misting, not lots. That just helps to prevent cracking. Although with an embossing folder like this, it's not necessary really because this one doesn't have like that deep etching that other ones do, but it still gives like the perfect embossed impression. And this is the Pinpoint Starlets embossing folder and it's so pretty. <laughs> so I did my embossing and like I said, I was using uh, Distress Watercolor Paper. And then for my first card front, I'm doing just simple ink blending. So I picked out a couple colors to go with the saltwater taffy, which I chose squeeze lemonade and salvage patina. And oh, this combo, it just makes me happy. <laughs> it's like the perfect spring combo, you know? So I'm using distress ink first. I started with squeeze lemonade because it's my lightest color, my yellow. It's just habit to start with my lightest. So I just l easily blended that across the center. Just working on a scrap of paper. Because again, I was just kind of like, literally like opened these inks and everything. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and just, gra just grabbed things at random. So then I'm adding the saltwater taffy. And they, when it blends with the squeeze lemonade, it creates like the prettiest little shade of orange. Like seriously, this just makes me happy. So I did light blending with this. You could make it more intense by applying more color, um, using like the um, blending foams instead of I'm using just blending brushes here. But I wanted this sort of lighter look. It just, it ends up being so soft. So then I flipped this around and I added the uh, salvage patina. And then that blended with um, the squeeze lemonade and creates like this nice little green. So I did that. And then I used my distress sprayer. And when you only press down the handle like halfway, you get the nice little splotches. So I'll get that nice little splatter effect on this. And I did it a couple times just because of course, you know, and then I'm going to add more splatter later. But this was my first go with just Distress inks on top of this embossing folder. And it was just pretty. So then my second go, I am using the other embossed panel. And this time I'm using Distress spray stains. Live. The difference with these is one, you get intense color. It's not as easy to get it like a light um, look. You can if you really add a good amount of water. Um, but also you don't have as much control with the sprays. Like the more I use the sprays, the more comfortable I get with them. But if you want more control using the inks and blending tools gives you more control. But you guys know I love my sprays. So I sprayed the exact same colors. I used salvage patina, squeeze lemonade, and then the uh, saltwater taffy. And then I flattened it out as it was like dry just kind of bending it back and forth. And then once it was dry, I did the same thing. Splattered a bit of water on it, pressed my paper towel onto it, removed the um, excess ink. So I've got that fun water effect. And then I'm still going to add more splatter because that's just what I do. <laughs> so I use my Avery L white ink spray, just shook that up really well. And then just covered these backgrounds with um, splatter. Just went all over the place with them. And then of course I'm going to let that completely dry. And then once these are dry, 
you can do this one of two ways. I'm taking my ink pad directly to these. Normally I wouldn't do this. If these were more intense colors, they're really deep pigmented color, you know, picked raspberry, seedless preserves, villainous potion, etc. I would not bring my ink pad directly to this because it would most likely pick up the pigments. But these were light enough, it wasn't really happening. Plus I had made sure these backgrounds are completely dry. But I'm just using my white ink pad and very lightly, like I'm not pressing, I'm just lightly running it along this. It's going to be subtle because again, these colors are subtle. But it just, the ink picks up the raised edges of the embossing and it just makes them stand out just a little bit. You can add more ink if you want to make it more intense. And also again, if you're using darker colors, I've shown in other videos, I just use like a blending foam and pick up the ink that way so I don't get my ink pad you know, covered with other colors. So I did all that. And then I wanted to use the saltwater taffy oxide ink as well as the embossing glaze because it is also beautiful. I don't know. I just, I love this color. But I, again, and I've said this, I'm like a broken record. I don't care what color Tim Holtz releases. I'm going to love it. Like it could be literally be like the color of just crap. <laughs> and I'll be like, oh my God, it's amazing. So anyway, <laughs> anyway, I inked up sentiments from the XL Greetings 3 set. I'd use my anti stack powder tool and then I'm inking up the sentiments with the oxide ink, stamping them a couple times. And then I'm going to cover them with the saltwater taffy embossing glaze. If you've never worked with embossing glaze, it's basically a somewhat transparent embossing powder tinted in that color. So using it with the same color of oxide ink, it just intensifies it and gives it that little extra something. It is definitely more intense than if I just used clear embossing powder. So, and again, it's just the prettiest color. So I poured that over the sentiments, brushed off any excess that, you know, wanted to hang around with just a little paintbrush. And then I'll melt this with my heat tool till everything is glossy and melted. And then after I've done that, I'm going to use the coordinating wafer dies to die cut both of these sentiments. So get everything melted, give it a couple seconds to cool off. Off camera, I just used um, my coffee filter and funneled it all back into the container. Put the lid back on so I don't knock it over because that's usually what ends up happening. Any sort of embossing powder, always make sure to put the lids back on. All you have to do is knock over one container of black embossing powder once over carpet. You'll learn your lesson. Anyway, <laughs> attached the coordinating wafer dies just with some washi tape around that through my die cut machine. I'm going to set those aside. And then for the insides of the cards, I'm just going to use more sentiments from that XL Greetings 3 set, but I'm going to do some ombre inking. I've shown this in other ways. Usually I will just ink directly onto the stamp with the edge of my ink pad. I've shown that in a bunch of videos, but this time I thought I would get not necessarily fancier, but a little more technical. And this works really good. And now I'm like, ooh, I need to do this with other stamps. So what I did is I just took squeeze lemonade oxide ink, salvage patina oxide ink, and the saltwater taffy oxide ink. And you can't really tell because I'm filming from above, but I'm holding these ink pads on an angle and mostly just pressing the edge onto a non-stick surface. So this is just my little uh, non-stick craft mat that comes with my glass media mat. And then I picked up that ink with my brayer and then brayered that ink onto the stamp. And I'm going to just keep repeating this because using the brayer means I'm getting a lighter impression of the ink on the stamp, but there's plenty of ink on this brayer. So I'm not re-inking the brayer at all. I just keep rolling it over the stamp, stamping, rolling it over stamp, stamping. And I get such a nice smooth transition between the colors and it just love. It also reminded me I need to re-ink my saltwater taffy and or not saltwater taffy because it's new. My squeeze lemonade and salvage patina. <laughs> Distressing, especially squeeze lemonade. I've been using this one a lot. But I didn't clean up my nonstick mat. I just pressed the inks again, kind of in the same spots over it, just to kind of re-ink it. And then again, rolled the brayer back and forth between it with this one, with this sentiment, because it wasn't long, if that makes sense. I just did it in this direction instead so I could get all three colors on it and again it just and the more you brayer it the you know the colors blend on the stamp and on the brayer and you just you get this perfect transition and I'll show it again at the very end as well but 
it just really made me happy. <laughs> like, it's so fun, you know, when things are just like working as like these cards are fairly simple, but just everything was working and coming together and matching and the colors were pretty and I was just happy. So anyhow, because these cards are rather simple, I've said this before, I use more like thicker foam tape than I normally do. So this time it's the regular Scotch foam tape. So I pop the sentiments up with that foam tape onto their backgrounds. And then I'm just going to reinforce the fold here on the card bases, just using my score buddy and my Teflon bone folder. And then once those co cards are folded, I had put um, score tape on the back of these panels as well. One, it helps adhere them really well because, you know, they've warped a bit with the amount of moisture it added to them. But it also pops it up, gives it that bit of dimension. So I'm going to pop those onto both of these card bases. And then I dug through my, I've got a container, you know, of all the different sequin mixes that Simon's released. And I found two that were just perfect you know, again, when things just come together. So I have the Poppy Bloom sequins mix and the April Showers sequin mix. And they just had the perfect colors that went perfectly with these cards. So I kind of sprinkled those throughout both of these cards. And then I'm going to adhere them into place with dabs of Craft Tacky Glue using my little Studio Cadia embellishment wand. And once those are all adhered in place, let the glue dry. And then I'm going to pair these cards with some lemon chiffon envelopes just to bring out more of the yellow. And that finished them off. So like I said, adding the white ink with these. Also, I need to re-ink my white ink powder. Get a new one because I've had this one for years. But okay, it's subtle. But it just gives it that little extra something. Same with the splatter, you know. But more, I wanted like that texture to show. Like these ombre sentiments on the insides just... Oh, yes. So anyhow, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed. As always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have all the supplies linked. All that info will be below if you want to check it out, if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching, subscribing, thumbs upping, commenting, all of it. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.